One of the most frustrating parts of building electronic circuits is getting something wrong. For a board that should take 10 minutes to put together, you could spend an hour just trying to fix something you got backwards. Sadly, desoldering is not as easy as soldering in reverse. For this tutorial, I'm only going to be using a solder sucker and wick. There are more specialized desoldering tools out there like heat guns, low melting point solders, etc., but you probably don't have access to these unless you do repair work for a living. And really the basic tools are all you need for most jobs. A solder sucker, also called a desoldering pump, is a device that has a spring-loaded plunger, where when you push the button, the plunger springs back and pulls a vacuum inside the tube. The tip is made of Teflon, which resists heat and won't be damaged when you put the tip against molten solder. It requires a bit of finesse to use. Put the tip of the pump over molten solder and push the button to suck it up. In my opinion, solder suckers are ideal for removing large quantities of solder, so they're good to use first. Next we've got solder wick or braid. This is a strand of finely woven copper wire coated in flux. Flux cleans the surfaces of hot metals and allows solder to wet to them. Be sure to always use a fresh piece of wick, because as soon as you heat it up, the flux burns away. To use the wick, put the braid against the joint and put your iron on top of it. When the braid heats up sufficiently, it'll wick up the solder by capillary action. The last trick is to heat all the pins of your component at the same time while pulling it out. Multiple soldering irons and multiple friends to help you are very useful at this point, especially if you have a multi-pin device. This can take some creativity because you have to apply the iron to one side of the board, hold the board steady, and pull your device hard from the other side. Too stubborn to ask for help at first, I actually burn my fingers while filming this part, but I'll spare you from that clip. The point is, it requires getting creative. It can actually help to undo your hard work removing solder at this point and put additional solder on the pads to ensure really good heat conduction when you're holding the iron at funny angles. There comes a point when you need to make a judgment call about what's more valuable to you, your board or your component. If you're desperate, you can save one at the expense of the other. So let's say you want to save the board and don't care about your component. The first trick is just to cut it out. You can clean up each hole by itself a lot more easily than all of them at once. The second trick is to solder over the pads after you've cut out your component. This isn't ideal, but sometimes it's just what you have to resort to. It's possible to get broken leads stuck in really tight holes that are virtually impossible to remove, especially without professional equipment. In most cases, this fix should just be fine. Now let's say you have an important component stuck in a board that you're willing to sacrifice. That's right, take pliers to it. A Dremel could work too, but be careful of fiberglass dust and wear a mask. Now I'm not going to lie and tell you that this is good practice, but sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures. So that's all I've got for now, and I'm sure that some of you watching this will have your own tips or strong opinions on these techniques to share, so let me know in the comments below and like and subscribe for more videos like this.